HyperOS 3 has just landed on the first lot of Xiaomi phones and honestly it's not massively different to HyperOS 2, albeit with a hot fist of iOS style shenanigans and obligatory AI shindiggery rammed lovingly right up the jacksy. Plus of course it's had a bit of a facelift with some fresh animations and there's been some general behind the scenes tinkering to improve the overall efficiency. So here's a squint at some of the best new and returning features in HyperOS 3 so you can get the most of your shiny new Xiaomi or Poco smartphone. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe, ding that old notifications bell. Cheers! So one of the best things about HyperOS, as usual, is the fact that it's highly customizable. Just dive into the personalization section of the settings. You've got quite a lot you can play around with in here. Right at the top, you can quickly and easily customize either your lock screen or your home screen. Let's give the clock a tap, for instance. You've got a wide selection of alternative options now. I rather like the doodle one, although there's plenty of big clocks if you like it large. And yes, I did say clock. You can tap the wallpaper icon at the bottom to switch that up. The default ones are mostly a bit cack, to be honest. But you can choose any of your own photos or even videos to use as a wallpaper. As long as it's shot vertically, it's fine. Just got to choose the video, trim it to the bits that you actually want to use, and then hit continue. You're good to go. Or alternatively, HyperOS 3 can also create a dynamic wallpaper from any of your photos using the stiffy inducing powers of AI. I gotta say, this is by far my favorite new HyperOS 3 feature. I think I'm actually slightly addicted. Please send help. A couple of ways of doing this. The easiest way is go into the personalization section of the settings and then scroll down to AI dynamic wallpapers. To create a dynamic wallpaper, just tap this wee plus symbol down at the bottom here and then just poke any photo that you've shot using your smartphone's camera or downloaded onto the phone. Line it all up so it's just how you want it and then tap generate up in this top right corner. And it sometimes takes a few minutes, so I'd recommend just tapping finish in background and it'll carry on doing its thing. All of the processing happens in the cloud, so sometimes you are waiting a wee while. And the results of this are variable to say at the least. So here's one of me holding a very frothy beer that it's not really animated much at all. It's just managed to make me look even more creepy somehow. Definitely prefer this bad boy here, shot at 2000 trees after maybe a few beers but i'm not really sure what's going on with the fingers over on the left here that's it's got a bit a little bit ai shall we say don't know what it is about hands it just really doesn't get hands at all cats and other pets usually turn out pretty good but my favorite pick by far is any anime photo basically because the results are so bad mental you can't predict what's gonna happen Sometimes the results are fairly sedate, just the characters sort of talking and moving slightly. But then HyperOS took this photo and turned it into this dynamic wallpaper. I'm not sure why he's gone quite so crazy. Basically, anyone clutching food tends to go a bit mental in these things. And I have absolutely no idea what's happening here. She just transforms into some sort of weird cat girl thing. But this one here is by far my absolute favourite. For some reason, the cat's head seems to spring out of its arse and then reverse pukes everywhere. I don't know why, but I could watch that literally all day. Anyway, back in that personalization section, you've got plenty of other stuff you can play around with. For instance, the likes of the always on display, lots of different options to choose from there, including the ability to schedule the always on display for certain times so it's not on all night long. You can also change up the edge animation that appears whenever you get a notification and the fingerprint sensor animation as well. Lots of cool little options there. And if you can't be bothered to create your own lock screen, wallpaper, etc., no worries, just tap themes. There's plenty of options here that you can download that other people have crafted, including quite a few anime ones, so it certainly gets my vote of approval. Now, one of the big new features here on HyperOS 3 is the subtly titled Hyper Island. So yes, like seemingly most Chinese launchers these days, HyperOS 3 can convert your dinky wee selfie cam orifice into a big long floater, similar to Apple's dynamic turd. Now on iPhones, the dynamic island kind of makes sense because it helps to mask that whopping great ugly selfie blob. Whereas here it's obviously a lot less necessary, but it is still quite a helpful feature. So see your Playing some tunes in Spotify, you minimize it. 
the old hyper island will then pop up. You can give this a swift poke in order to bring up some media controls. So you can quickly skip through your tracks or cast it to a different device. Now after prodding the hyper island, you can give it another poke to actually fully open the Spotify app. And it doesn't just work for media streaming apps like Spotify either. So for instance, say you're recording something, you can then swipe the recorder app away. And again, you get that old hyper island popping up. And again, just give it a wee poke. If you want to enter the recording controls, you can either pause the recording or stop it entirely. And you'll also now notice you've got a dual hyper island type situation. You can just poke between them in order to cycle. And that Spotify one has kind of been shunted off to the side as well now that we've got the recorder on the go. It also works well for turn-by-turn -turn navigations if you're busy directing yourself somewhere in maps. And also in clock if you're running a timer or a stopwatch that will also pop up at the top there. So we can have many hyper islands all on the go at the same time. If that is the case, you can thankfully swipe between them all nice and easy like so. Otherwise, you can simply swipe them all away, get rid of them. Bugger ye right off, Hyper Island. And as always, Hyper OS 3 also includes an excellent range of easy to use gestures. You can get involved with these by tapping on settings and then scrolling down to additional settings right here at the bottom. And then what you're looking for is the old gesture shortcuts. There's a few good ones in here, including swiping three fingers down the screen in order to take a screenshot. And you can also double press the old power button to either launch the camera or turn on the torch. Just give whichever one you prefer a tap and then hit the little slider there. And it's pretty handy if your kid or your cat suddenly unexpectedly starts doing something adorable. You can capture that moment right before they revert back to being a complete prick. And additional settings is well worth an explore because it's just kind of a dump for all kinds of tools that don't really fit anywhere else. So for instance, you've got a decent one-handed mode in here. Given that most Xiaomi and Poco smartphones are absolute whoppers, they can be a bit tricky to use one-handed. You need to reach something up towards the top end of the screen. And there's some other good features stuffed away in here as well, including a screen recorder. You've got parental controls if you're going to hand off your phone to a nipper for an hour or two. And a bit of AI subtitles as well, which is pretty handy. You can pop a wee shortcut to this into the control center simply by tapping edit, finding it in the list and then tapping the wee plus icon. And then when you switch this on, any dialogue that's going on in any of your apps will pop up in this handy wee window. It's great news if you want to enjoy a YouTube video, but you don't have headphones, for instance, or you're just struggling to hear what's going on because you're in quite a noisy environment. Now, one HyperOS app that I've not really ever been a fan of is the Gallery app because, I mean, just bloody look at it. Not the most organized or attractive app, that's for sure, but thankfully in HyperOS 3 it has been slightly tweaked. So now, for instance, you can sort by the date added, and thankfully in the view mode, you can actually group it by date rather than having everything just kind of stuffed together. If you tend to download a lot of images or receive a lot in the likes of WhatsApp as well, you can also filter those out. Just go to filter and then camera albums, and then it's just stuff that you've shot yourself. Now, you may have read online about a fresh new HyperOS 3 gallery app feature called Intelligent Photo Management, which can automatically sort all of your photos into AI generated folders and generally tidy things up and make them all bloody lovely. I was particularly excited about this feature, that's how sad and meaningless my life is, until I discovered by talking with Xiaomi that unfortunately it's only available in the Chinese ROM version of HyperOS 3, not in the global version. Bugger! Hopefully that'll be coming in some sort of update soon. Oh and also incidentally in the gallery you can make any photos that you want private so only you can see them. Quite handy for bank statements or other sensitive documents as well as, uh, well, any pervy stuff, I guess. Lovely bit of homemade grot for those long winter evenings. All you need to do is long press on any pics that you want to make private. You can then tap additional ones as well. Click add to album down at the bottom here and then select private album. You'll be asked to scan your fingerprint, enter your pin, whatever. And then back in that gallery app, simply tap this wee tab down here and then drag your finger down you'll again be prompted to scan your print or enter your pin and then you'll be straight into your private album my cat definitely far too hot for youtube and of course as always i've got to give a shout out to the game turbo toolbar 
Now this is absolutely packed to the armpits with fantastic features. So for instance, you can boost the performance, not particularly necessary in heads up, but pretty good if you're doing a bit of Genshin Impact or whatever. And if you need an extra boost, you've got other apps running in the background. You can just clear the memory with a quick tap there. Like so do not disturb if you want to be fully focused on the game. And if you want to while away a few hours playing the likes of Wuther and Waves, but you don't want your Xiaomi or Poco to die on you, well, just plug it in and then tap the slow charging feature. And this will keep your phone juiced up while at the same time preventing the battery from charging quickly and potentially overheating the phone. And alternatively, if you're worried about spending too long gaming, you do have a timer that you can switch on. It tells you exactly how long you've been gaming at any particular time. And you can also conjure up other apps on top of your game. Quite handy if you want to get a video walkthrough of a particularly tricky bit on the go, so you can follow it along. Or you can watch me munch on a giant sausage at the same time as playing Genshin Impact. I believe they call that living the dream. But anyway, there you have it, my lovelies. That's just a run through of a few of my favourite new and recurrent HyperOS 3 features. In case you've just received that update or just bought yourself a spangly new Xiaomi or Poco smartphone, you want to know your way around. Now, did I miss out your own personal favourite HyperOS feature? Well, definitely let us know down in the comments below. And if you are a massive Xiaomi fan, well, I might have some more Xiaomi and Poco related video review type shenanigans hitting the channel in the next couple of weeks. Make sure you poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell so you don't miss out, boy howdy. And have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everybody. I love you.